Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we will begin building a project with Tailwind CSS. I'll provide links to example source code and all resources in the description below. We're going to build a website for the Acme Rockets company. You can see their page starts with a hero section, then it has an Our Rockets section where we have cards for the different rockets the Acme Rocket company sells. There's a testimonial section with satisfied customers, and there's a contact us section. And at the very bottom, there of course is a footer. Now I'll go back to the top and I'm going to press Control Shift and the letter I to go ahead and open up DevTools. And you can see I'm in an iPhone 6, 7, 8 view here. And we have a hamburger menu and each part of the page, each section, then gets its own display as well. So we can scroll through that and then we can get to the testimonials or we can once again use that mobile menu. And then there is a contact us section here as well and eventually the footer also. And then let's go ahead and switch this to responsive because now you see how this widens out and we can see different parts or different sections all in one part of the viewport. So we're going to put in a couple of media queries that respond to aspect ratio. So as it gets narrow, it changes to the mobile viewport. And then as it gets wider, it goes ahead and changes how it displays everything once again, more like it would for an iPad or a more square viewport. And then as we get very wide, more like a 16 by nine aspect ratio. Then we have each section take up its own viewport on the page once again, so it separates them out. And we'll implement all of this with Tailwind as it's supported. Now Tailwind also supports light and dark mode. So I'm going to the personalized section of Windows here and changing my color theme from dark, which I prefer, now to light and I can bear this long enough to at least show the different theme and we have our hero section once again all in light mode now you can see the rockets have cards in the rockets section the testimonials are styled differently as well the contact us form here and the footer also so we're also going to control light and dark mode now I'm going to switch this back because most of the time we'll keep it in dark to save my eyes but we'll occasionally go back to the light mode and check that out as well so now that we've previewed the project let's set up our dev environment and get to work we're starting today with an empty folder opened in VS code so go ahead and create a folder for the project on your computer and and then open that empty folder with VS Code. After that, I'm going to press Control in the back tick to open up a terminal window. And the very first thing we're going to do is type npx tailwind css init and go ahead and press enter. After that, it should create a tailwind config file. And after that, we need to go ahead and set up our project structure. So I'm going to just click in the file tree, create a new directory and name this build and then click here again and create another new directory and name this source. Now, while I have the source directory highlighted, I'm going to create a new file inside of it named input.css. In this file, I'm going to start out with at and then tailwind and then put base. Now I'm just going to copy this down three times, well twice, I just need the full line three times. And on the second line, I'm going to switch base to components and on the third line, I'm going to switch base to utilities. And I'm just going to save this. This is all we need in this file for now. Now I'm going to highlight the build directory and I'm going to create a new file named index.html. Press enter. Then I'm going to create another new directory inside the build directory and this will be named image, just IMG. And then I'm going to paste in some image files that I have, and these will all be available in the course resources for you under lesson two. So I'm going to right click here and choose paste, and we should get the four images. We have our rocket dab, and then we have a rocket launch, a rocket man and a rocket ride. Now these are PNGs and they have transparent backgrounds and we'll use those in the page. Now I'm also going to paste a favicon.ico, which stands for icon here inside of the root directory. So at the top level, not in the build or in the source. However, if you were to deploy this project, you would deploy everything that was in the build folder. At that point, you would also want this fave icon to be in the build folder. But for us to see it during development, we need to put it in the root. So that's where I'm going to leave it right now. And now inside of the Tailwind config file, we need to put in the information for our content. And if you remember from the previous lesson, this is structured the same way. So I'm going to put in 
quote symbols first and then dot slash we're looking in the build directory and then another slash and an asterisk meaning all of the files that have the .html extension. And that's really all we need to add to the config file for now. I'll close this icon file here and go ahead and close the input CSS. We'll be working in the HTML file, but I'll go ahead and close the config file also. Now, at the command line in the terminal here once again, we want to go ahead and initialize npm. And so to do that, I'm going to type npm init dash y. Now, in the previous lesson, you should have installed npm when you installed Node.js. So you should have this on your system already. And I'll press enter. This is going to create a package JSON file. So this is another type of config file. And we'll be able to use this to make some things easier for us. In the previous lesson, you may remember we had to type in the terminal window and tell Tailwind where our input file was and where to output our style.css file. Well, we can change this to a script in this package JSON. So I'm just going to change this test to Tailwind. And then I'm going to highlight the existing script here and just change it. So we'll put this as npx tailwind CSS dash I for the input and then dot slash source. And then we'll have input dot CSS. This is where our input file is. Then we'll have dash O for output and dot slash build. And we want to put it inside of a CSS directory and then have style dot CSS, but we're not quite finished. We need to put dash dash watch at the end so it will constantly look for changes and then update that style.css file. After that, you can save the package JSON file. Now, before we're finished with our package JSON, let me go ahead and press control backtick once again to open up a terminal window. And we want to install a development dependency. And we can do that by typing npm, not x, but npm, and then I for install, then dash capital D, which tells NPM this is a dev dependency. And then we want prettier dash plugin dash tailwind CSS and press enter. And we'll be able to see this dev dependency now installed inside of our package JSON. It's listed here as a dev dependency. And now we have a node modules directory over here inside of our file tree. And because we have that, now we haven't initialized a Git repository, but I assume you'll want to save your code to GitHub with Git just like I do. And this is always a good habit. Once you have a node modules over here, you don't want to send that to GitHub. So let's create another new file in the top level here, not inside one of the folders. And it starts with a period. So dot git ignore. And inside of this git ignore file, we're going to list node underscore modules. And that will ensure it's not included in our code repository that is sent to GitHub. And now before we're finished with our package JSON, I'm going to press Alt Z so the code wraps and I can see the end of the line because I need to put a comma here. I want to go ahead and put in a script for prettier as well. So I'm going to put prettier here and then I'm going to have NPX prettier dash dash write. And now this part is important. We're going to tell it to look for all HTML files and only HTML files. And so this is two asterisks slash asterisk dot HTML. And what we're doing is telling Prettier to only look for our HTML files and it will only format them. And that is what Prettier does. It formats the files. What we're going to use Prettier for concerning Tailwind CSS is the class order. And that's because Tailwind has provided this Prettier plugin and they have a recommended class order that the classes be listed in. We won't have to think about that as we write out the classes. We can just style the components as we think of the classes. And then afterwards, we can run Prettier and it will auto format that HTML and organize the class list for us. And that's especially important if you're working on a team and that way you're always used to having the classes listed in that specific order and Prettier will format all of the files in the same way no matter who's working on them. Now to get started, we need to run our Tailwind script and we can run either one of these scripts by typing in the terminal window. The first thing we have to type is npm run and then we type the command name. So I'm going to have npm run Tailwind and press enter. Now you can see it's running the command 
And after this, let's see what we have. We have a CSS directory now inside of our build directory, and we have a style.css file. Now we currently have a couple of warnings because we didn't really link to our HTML yet, so it doesn't have any HTML to check. So these warnings will go away, no worries there. Let's go to the index.html. We'll start by typing an exclamation mark, which is an Emmet abbreviation, and then we press tab, and it gives us the outline of a page. So we're going to change the title of the page to Acme Rockets. Just under the title line, let's go ahead and add our link to our CSS. And if you choose the link colon CSS Emmet abbreviation from the IntelliSense menu, it will fill in the rest for you. It's a style sheet and we have a style.css file and that's what's in our directory over here. But notice it's not telling it to look inside of the CSS directory. So we do need to add that part to the href value. Now let's start by adding some classes to the body element that already exists because we used that Emmet abbreviation. So here we're going to put min-h-screen. And since we've installed the IntelliSense for Tailwind, and we did that in the previous lesson, we can now mouse over the class and see whatever the actual CSS rule would be. So this is a min height of 100 VH. We can add some more and review those and we'll occasionally reference the Tailwind site as well. So now I'm going to put a BG slate 50. So this would be the background for our light theme. And you can see when we mouse over this, it has a background color that's a little bit more complicated, but overall you see the RGB value for this color. After that, I'm going to put a dark background and now I just put the word dark and a colon and then I can say BG dash black and that sets the background for the dark mode. Likewise, I'm going to put dark and I need to change the text color for the dark mode and make that text color white. So we already have Tailwind checking out our HTML and looking at the classes and then of course compiling that into our style.css. Now we can use that live server extension and go ahead and start the page and we'll see what it looks like. And you can see it's completely black as I am using a dark mode preference. Now I'm going to drag VS Code to the left so we can see the page on the right. I'm also going to press Control B to hide the file tree and Alt Z so any long line wraps down to the next line so we can see it. But now we'll be able to add classes and content to the page and see the changes in real time over here on the right. Now let's add a header to the page. So I want to start off by typing header, but then I can add classes with Emmet by typing a dot afterwards and then the class name. So I'm going to add several classes now, bg-teal-700, which would be the background for the header, then another dot and text-white, and another dot and sticky, which would be position sticky, and then dot top dash zero, so that puts it at the very top with position sticky, then dot z dash 10, which changes the z index. When I press tab, you can see all of these classes are applied to the header. And now we need to add content inside the header, but before we do, I need a section wrapper. So I'm going to add a section element. And for the section, I'm going to add a few classes too. I'll give this a max width. So this is max dash, w dash 4 xl and then i'm also going to add auto margins on the x axis so that is mx dash auto after that i'm going to put p dash 4 and that's some padding and then i'm going to set the display to flex and then justify between which is setting the justify contents to between and we can look at each one of these afterwards so i'll type between if i could spell there we go and then after that, I also want items dash center, which would align the items. So I press tab and we see all of those added and then I'll add a space here. But let me mouse over the max width 4XL sets the max width to 56 rims or a width of 896 pixels. Now I set that on the section and not the header because no matter how wide the page gets, I want this teal color to extend the full width of the page. But the section is actually going to be centered with the auto margins that we have here with MX auto and you can see that's margin left and right auto and that will center the contents of the header which we will allow to get no wider than we set here that 896 pixels or 56 rem 
we have some padding all the way around, not left, right. It is all the way, top and bottom also. That's padding of one rem. Display of flex. This would be our justify content space between, when we say justify between, and item center is a line item center. And now we can add our page title. So I'll type it H1, and I'm going to give a class here of text-3XL and another class of font-medium. Go ahead and press tab. So we have our H1, and inside of this, I'm going to put Acme Rockets. And now you can see we have our Acme Rockets up here in the top left of the menu. I'm going to go to this website now, Emojipedia, and I can just type in Rocket, and here is the Rocket emoji, and I can click Copy, and I'm going to put that emoji right here beside Acme Rockets and save, we'll go back to our page now, and we can see we have Acme Rockets right here with the rocket now in the top left. This is also going to be an anchor link, and it's just going to link to the top of the page, which we're going to call Hero. So I'm going to put in the pound sign and Hero, to make this just a page anchor, and I'm going to highlight and Control X to cut and put the closing anchor after Acme Rockets. Now we can notice several things about our page right here. One, we didn't have to style the link any differently and there is no underline. However, it is a link. We can see our mouse changes to a pointer over Acme Rockets. Also notice there's no padding on the page. Our header is right at the top and we didn't have to put in a reset. That's also in there by default with Tailwind. Okay, I'm going to scroll for some more room and under the H1, I need to put in a div. I will not put any classes on the div. It is just a wrapper. Now inside this div, I am going to put a button element and the button is going to have an ID so we can type a hashtag and put the ID afterwards. And this is mobile-open dash button for the ID. And then we can put the classes by starting with the dot. So I'm going to have dot text dash three XL and then dot SM colon hidden dot focus colon outline dash none and press tab. I'm going to press enter here to give a separate line where we can put the content and the content's going to be an HTML entity. And I can do that with the ampersand and then the pound sign and then 9776 and a semicolon. This is actually a hamburger icon. And we can look that up and other icons on this unicode-table.com website. And I'll put links to both of these resources in the description. But here you can see I looked up double quotes, which we can do again. But here I'll put hamburger, and I need to spell hamburger right. There it is. Here's trigram for heaven. It came up when I searched hamburger. So that's actually what they call it. And you can copy it here, but you can see the HTML entity code is what I typed into the page right here. So let's go back to our web page. And now that I've added it, you can see it over here in the top right. Let's go over these classes as well. I set a text size on this, but now notice the SM and the colon. This is for a media query. So this is saying once it reaches this breakpoint, which is defined by SM, then hide the hamburger menu because we won't want that. And you can see as I mouse over, SM is defined as 640 pixels as the min width, and then it sets it to display none. Also focus, so if we have focus on this button, I set the outline to none. I'm going to scroll again, and this is going to be a little different because we're adding an element we won't see, so I'll have to drag the window so we can see it afterwards. I'm going to add a nav element, and we'll give several classes here, a hidden class first, and that's why we won't see it at first. But after that, we'll set the media query to small, and then it will have a block display. Then we'll use space dash x dash eight. This gives the children of the nav element a margin left. So we'll look at that. That is different than setting a margin left on the nav element itself. Then I'm going to set this to text dash XL and press tab. And that's pretty good. I want to add one other attribute here, and this is going to be an aria dash label and we'll just set this equal to main, as this is the main navigation. There will be another navigation element that we use for the mobile menu as well, instead of using the same nav for both. So we want to identify those uh, individually. 
Okay, after this, we need to have some anchor elements inside of our nav element. So I'm going to start off with the anchor element. And then, yes, we could choose a link here. And after that, oh, well, I'll just type link like this so I can chain the classes on. After that, we need one class, and it is hover, which is a pseudo class. And then we'll set the opacity to dash 90 and press tab. This you can see gives us an href with an HTTP colon slash slash. So we want to remove that. And this first link is going to be to hashtag rockets. So it's an anchor link to another part of the page. Okay, after we've got this here, and you can see since we're indented and we're wrapping, it's getting to where we don't have quite as much space, but I'm going to press shift alt in the down arrow and copy this down two more times. So the next one is going to be testimonials. And then the last one will be contact. And we could also, of course, change those names inside of the content here for the links, but this is going to be our rockets. And then testimonials should just be testimonials. And then for contact, I will have contact us. Let's save this much now, and I'm going to drag this to a full screen. So instead of seeing the mobile menu, we should see how these selections are applied. And you can see the opacity makes these fade just a little bit. They have a 90% where it still shows the white, but we can tell when we're hovered over each one. Also, this is a good time to point out where our section has that margin set to auto and it gets no wider than 896 pixels. So you can see it doesn't fill out the top bar, but the color, the background that we have for the header extends all the way to each edge. And that's why we have the section inside of the header so we can then center the content that we want for the width that we're actually going to use for our page. Now I'm going to drag Chrome back over to the right and we'll still have Visual Studio Code here on the left. But for now, we're finished with our header. Now let's scroll up and add our main element underneath the header element. So we'll just type main and let's add some classes here. So dot max dash w dash four XL, much like we had set on the section inside the header. So our main element will keep that same width. And we'll also use MX dash auto, which will set margins auto on the left and the right. And so that will keep it lined up with that content, the content section that we have inside of the header element. And now our other sections, except for the footer, will be inside of this main element. So let's start with a section element. We'll give this an ID of hero, and then we'll apply some classes. So I'll have dot flex, and then dot flex dash column, which is col dash reverse. And then we'll also have dot justify dash center and dot small now for a media query flex dash row. So instead of column at that point, and then we'll add a dot ex dash dash six. So that will be padding on the x axis left and right. And that value of six, we can see what that is when we mouse over. We'll have items dash center. We'll also put a gap dash eight. So that is a flex gap if you're used to flex box. And then we'll have also padding on the y axis of six. So I could combine those and I will just remove the x. So when I say p dash six, it applies it to the top and the bottom. And then we'll put a margin bottom dash 12 here and let's just press tab there now we've got all of that applied to the section and we can mouse over and see what each is so for example if we wanted to see exactly how many pixels a padding six is it's one and a half rims or 24 pixels or our gap eight is set to a gap of two rim and our margin bottom of dash 12 is three rem. And now inside the section, I'm going to use an article element and I'm going to apply a class here as well. And it will start with a media query. So small, then it will be W dash one half. I press tab and that did not work when we press tab there. I probably needed to escape that too to do that with our Emmet abbreviation. So I'm just going to just type it in here. 
one half. And let's look at what that stands for as well. So when I mouse over using a telesense, that is width of 50% when we have W dash one half. And now we'll put our H2 for much of the text in here, our slogan for Acme Rockets. And I shouldn't have pressed tab, so let me go ahead and delete that, and I'll press H2 once again, or type H2, and then dot max dash W dash MD, and then dot text dash 4XL, and dot font dash bold, dot text dash center, dot SM, media query here for text dash 5XL, SM colon text dash left, then also dot, I need to put dots after that. So let me have this dot once again, SM text dash left dot text dash slate dash 900. So a dark slate there. And then one more dot, and we'll put dark text dash white and press tab. So now let's put some content here so we can see what we get on the page. We'll have we boldly go where no rocket has gone before, dot, dot, dot. And when we save, we should see that on the page, and we do. Now this is overwriting the text slate 900 with our text white because we're in a dark theme. Other than that, let's see what some of these are. Max-W-Medium is a max width of 28 rems, it says. And then we have a text dash four dash XL. Notice this not only sets the font size, but it also sets the line height, and that's important, and we will need that in the future as well. When we look at some other areas, when we're trying to determine the space they take up. Font bold, as you might guess, would be a font weight. Uh, text center just aligns the text center. And here's a 5SL. That doesn't stand for anything. This should be 5XL. There we go. It's always good to review. And now we can see that increases the font size. When we get to that break point, we have text left and the colors. And now let's put a span around the phrase where no rocket. So I'm going to put an extra space and then start typing span. And then I can put the classes after. So I'll have text dash indigo dash 700 and then dot dark text dash indigo dash 300 and press tab. Now it closes the span automatically, so I'll just highlight Control X to cut that out, and then get rid of that space I put, and put the closing span at the end of rocket. So we have where no rocket, and it highlights those words in that specific color. But we're far from finished here. Let's put our paragraph underneath as well. So now we'll have a paragraph, and we'll have max-w-md, and then dot that text 2xl dot margin top dash four, which is MT, then text dash center dot small text dash left. So we switch the text to left when we hit a certain break point. Then we'll have text dash slate dash 700, but also a dark text dash slate dash 400 and press tab. So now that we have our paragraph here, we're going to have another one underneath it with the same classes. So I'm going to highlight all of that, press shift alt and the down arrow. So now we have two paragraphs with those classes. Now in the first paragraph, I'll get an extra line there for the content and I'm going to put, we're building rockets for the next century today. There we go, today. From the moon to Mars, comma, Jupiter, and beyond. Okay, that's our first paragraph, and when I save, you can see that, and it's a little bit different color of font. Now, for the last paragraph, a very simple one, we'll put, think, Acme Rockets, with a period, and save. So now we have all of our slogans in. And now let's scroll for some more room because underneath this article, we need to put in the image. I'll just type image again and press tab. Okay, we have a source. We're going to look in the image folder. And this is going to be our rocket dab image. So after we press tab, we have a list of the images in the folder. We can choose our rocket dab. 
And for the alt, we're going to put in rocket dab. And after that, we still need to apply our class. And I'm going to put that back here first. So I'll say class equals, and now I'll have w dash one half and save. So now we have our rocket dab on top. And if you remember for the section, we did a flex column reverse. When I scroll up here, I'll find it. There it is, flex column reverse. So even though the image comes after the article, it gets reversed. Now the image is on top in this viewport. However, if we switch and go to a wider viewport, it should be a row and the image comes after the text. Okay, let's pull this back over to the right and now we'll scroll down and underneath our section, we want to have a horizontal rule element. That is an HR element and we can add classes to that as well. So I'm going to add MX-Auto and then dot BG-Black for the lighter mode and then we would have dot dark BG-White and I'll press tab here, but I still need to apply that other class as well. And the other class that I want is the W dash one half. And then let's go ahead and save. And we should see our horizontal rule then at the bottom of the page. And now we're ready for the next section. So we'll scroll up for a little more room. We'll make sure we're scrolled all the way to the left as well. And underneath that horizontal rule, let's add another section element. And this section will have an ID of rockets. And now let's apply a couple of classes. We'll have a padding of six, P-6, and then a margin on the Y axis, dash 12. And I'll go ahead and press tab to get that filled in. And we'll have a space here in our section. I'm going to add an H2 and apply several classes here as well. So I'll have text dash four XL, then dot font dash bold, and dot text dash center, and then dot small, that's a media query again, dash text dash five XL, and then dot margin bottom, so MB dash six, and then also dot text dash slate dash 900, and dot dark text dash white, and press tab. So now for the content of our H2, we'll put our rockets, which is the title of the second section. And if we save, we should be able to scroll now and see our rockets. Likewise, the other sections inside of the main element now are going to take up that same type of title structure. So I'm just going to highlight all of this and press Shift Alt and the down arrow and do it two times so I get a section for testimonials and a contact us section. So now we just need to change rockets and I can press Control D to select both of those and I'm going to type testimonials, but it's not our testimonials, so I'm going to remove that from the content here. Likewise, down here, I can highlight one and press Control D to highlight the next and switch this to contact. And then here, I'm going to remove the our and put contact us for the title. And now we can scroll the page and we should see the testimonials and contact us as well. Likewise, we want to have one of these horizontal rules we already created between each section. So I'm going to highlight that, press Control C to copy and add one between each section that we have created here. So now we should have horizontal rules as well between each of these subtitles. Now let's go back to the Our Rockets section and add some more content besides this H2 subtitle. So underneath the H2, we're going to add an unordered list with a UL, and then we can apply classes here. And the first one is list-none. The next is mx-auto. The next is margins on the y-axis, dash 12. And then we'll have flex, and then dot flex-column, dot small for the media query, flex dash row, and then dot items dash center dot gap dash eight. Most of these we have seen earlier when we defined a flex display as well. So now we know our unordered list is a flex display and this list none is going to say list style type none. So it's 
going to remove the disks or whatever we would see by the list items. Now let's start with our list items and I'll type li and begin adding some classes again. We'll have a flex and then we'll also have flex dash column. So not only is the list item a flex item underneath the unordered list element, it's going to be a list display or a flex display, I should say, of its own so we can format what's inside of this list item. So now after the flex column, we're going to also have dot items dash center then dot border dot border dash solid. If I could spell solid dot border dash slate dash 900 dot dark border dash gray dash 100. And now let's go ahead and put a BG dash white class as well. And then we should also have a dot PY. So padding on the Y axis dash six and PX dash two and then rounded dash three XL, which will round the corners and then dot shadow dot or shadow dash XL, which should provide a box shadow also, so we can mouse over these to verify. Let's look at this shadow XL, and it is a large definition here, but we should see somewhere in there if it is a box shadow or not, but I really don't. So this is one we might reference the website for that I don't remember exactly what I put when I was designing this previously. Here we have a border radius of 1.5 rem or 24 pixels when we say rounded dash three XL. I think we've already covered most of what these other classes were, couple of classes I didn't add that I want to. One is the width dash two slash three, which is two thirds. That would probably be 66%. And yep, 66.66. Or if we have a media query small, I'm going to have a width dash five sixth. And if we look at that, we can see the percentage as well, probably when we mouse over. Yes, 83.3%. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at that Tailwind site. I said Shadow XL, so we're going to search for that. Shadow XL. It is a box shadow, and we should be able to see some values here if we look for this. Yep, here it is. Shadow XL equals box shadow, and it gives those values. So you can always reference the Tailwind site to see what you're putting inside for the classes if you don't remember like I just did right there. So right now you can see this is our content. We don't really have anything in it, but just by the classes we've applied, we get this. So I'm going to start with the image that we have. So let's go ahead and put in the image tag and this should have a class or two as well. So I'm going to put dot MB dash six, press tab. And then I want to put one other class. And once again, that is a W dash one half. So it should have a 50% width. Now for the source, we know we're going to look inside of the image directory. And then inside of the image directory, the image we want here is the rocket man. So go ahead and choose the rocket man. And for an alt, we can also put in the name of this rocket that is for sale, which is the Explorer. Now let's go ahead and save and see if we see our image. And there is our rocket man. Okay, I'll scroll for some more room, and underneath that, I need to put an H3, so another subheading that is a little smaller. We'll put dot text dash three XL dot text dash center dot text dash slate dash nine hundred, and one more dot dark text dash white, and press tab. So for the H3 content, we just want to put in the name of the rocket, which is Explore. And here's where I realize I have missed a style. So even though it was cool to see our little white area before we put the image in, what I missed was putting in the dark background in spite of the white background that we already have here. So what we also need is our dark and then BG dash black for the list item. And then when we save, now we see the outline, the border that we applied, plus the word explore. Now I'm going to highlight this H3 and press shift alt and the down arrow twice. Not that I'm going to have other H3 elements, but it is easy to change in Visual Studio Code. You can change the first element title and it should change the last. So I'm going to change the H3 to a P on this first element for paragraph. And now you can see I already have the closing paragraph. And if you don't have that, I remember there is an extension called auto rename tag that you could look for. Again, that's auto rename tag that will do that if 
it is not enabled for you by default in Visual Studio Code. Okay, after that, we just need to check our classes, and I think they're almost the same, except we're going to have this as a hidden class the first time, and then we're going to have a small media query block to display if we reach that screen size. Okay, after we've reached that, the text 3XL should still be the same, text center is the same, text slate 900 should be text slate 500, and our dark will not be white at all. It will be text dash slate dash 400 here. Now let's go ahead and change this explorer to a dollar sign as this is the most affordable rocket. And we don't see it yet. We see the explorer underneath because of this hidden class. So I'll quickly remove the hidden class with control X and save. Now we see our dollar sign. I'm going to go ahead and put the hidden class back so it only shows on the larger screens. Now this last element, where we highlight the H3 is also going to be a paragraph. So that should once again change the opening and closing. And then we'll just modify some of the classes here. One is once we reach the small, this will be hidden. So on the smaller screens, we won't be displaying this. This only happens when you reach this or above. So that's when we'll see this. Then we'll have text and instead of 3XL, this is going to be 2XL. Then we should have a text center as well, and we do. Then we want a margin top of two, and I believe I might have skipped that above also because we do want to have a margin between each of these. So jump back up to this one as well, and we'll put that MT-2 inside of that also. And that margin top two should give it, yes, one half rem on the top for a margin. And then it's going to finish out with the same colors we had in the other paragraph. So I'm going to highlight these as well and then highlight the ones below and just control V to paste those in. So we have the accurate colors. So now we've got that, but it is showing, but it's only the same word explore. And what we really want to say here is affordable exploration. So now if we drag this out to a larger screen, we'll see we have the dollar sign on a larger screen, but not on the smaller screen. So let's drag this back over. Okay, the most time consuming thing, of course, is designing the first one because your second and third cards would copy that. So now we can just highlight the full list item all the way down to the closing tag, do shift alt and the down arrow and do that twice and save, and now we have three identical cards, so we just need to change out some of that information in the card. So we'll make sure we're at the second card, and that should be a different image. So instead of the Rocket Man, it's going to be the Rocket Ride. So we'll delete that and switch that to Rocket Ride. And then instead of Alt Explore, it's going to be Adventurer. So we'll switch any instance of explore so i'll press Control d to highlight both of those and change to adventurer and save that now we can see the new image and adventurer here now there's a second dollar sign that goes here because the adventure is a little bit more expensive and then instead of affordable exploration it should say best-selling rocket because it's that medium tier so we'll have best selling rocket exclamation mark. And now we'll scroll down just a little more so we can change the code in this last one. And I'll scroll up so we can see the last one here as well. So this is not the rocket man. This is the rocket launch. So I'll just delete these last three letters here. Switch this to launch and save. And it changes the image. Now let's go ahead and change explore. And this should be the infinity. And after that, we also needed to change the alt. I should have done both of those at the same time and did not. So we can save that. And now, of course, this is $3 signs because this is the luxury model rocket. And we'll change down here from affordable exploration to luxury starship. And there it is. Okay, let's drag this back over. And I thought I saw an issue earlier, but now that looks okay because we have all three and they are centered. But four, we just saw this one to the left and I thought there might be a problem. But our three rockets are there in place and looking good. Now let's scroll to the top and see if our rocket's anchor is working as we expect it. Well, it just jumps right up there and it hides rocket. So there's some things we could change to make that just a little bit better. We'll have to, of course, switch between a large screen and a small screen to see what's going on. But let's come back up here to our section where we put our ID of rockets. 
and we want to apply a scroll margin. And what we need to do that for that is apply another class, and this will be scroll dash, and then MT for margin top, and I'm going to put a 20 here. So let's save. And now let's once again come back to a wider screen and we'll start at the top and then I'll click our rockets and now it looks just like it should. And we can also adjust this for our hero section as well. So let's scroll back up to where we started our hero section. Here it is. And let's put at the end another scroll margin, and this will be a little bit bigger, scroll dash margin top dash 40. There's not quite as much content in the hero section, and this will push it down just a little bit further. So let's go here now, pull this over, and we're at our rockets. Now our Acme Rockets links back to the top. So now when we press that, it scrolls accurately and we see everything we want to. Now dragging this back to the right once again, there is one other scroll that we can put, one other scroll rule, and that goes on the HTML element itself. And so way at the top on line two, we'll add a class. We're going to set this equal to, and I'll put in an SM for a media query breakpoint and then have scroll dash smooth. So we don't want this to happen on the smallest screens, but on the bigger screens, it will look pretty good. So let's go ahead and put that in. And now I'll drag this back over one more time. And if we go to our rockets, it's smooth when it scrolls. And then if I click back to the top, it's a smooth scroll all the way around. Okay, we have got a great jump start on our project and we've got the hero section and the rocket section complete. In the next tutorial, we'll complete the testimonials, the contact us, and the footer, and then we'll be looking at making our nav bar active in a mobile viewport as well. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.